Thank you for joining Jennifer Schaus and Associates in our 2019 Webinar Wednesday series. We're coming to you live from downtown Washington, D.C. Our webinars are every Wednesday, and you can find the upcoming schedule on our website. Past webinars and all recordings are also on our website and on our YouTube channel, along with over 160 other recordings on federal contracting topics. All are complimentary. If you have questions for our speaker today, you can contact him directly with the contact information you'll see on the last slide. All right, and just a little bit about us. We are Washington, D.C.-based firm and provide services for federal contractors. This ranges from market analysis reports to proposal writing and also post-award compliance. More information is on our website, so please visit us there. And this is an upcoming event that you can find more information here or on our website. And we do offer advertising, so you can reach out to this email if you'd like more information on that. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Our speaker today is Pedro Rubio, and he's going to be covering Inside the Source Selection Process Technical Review. Thank you for joining us today, Pedro. I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so how are you guys doing? So we're going to be doing a webinar on the Inside the Source Selection Process um, for Technical Review. Um, so how does government evaluate your technical proposal? Next slide. So. You may be able to find how the government um, puts together source selection or how they evaluate proposals on um, the FAR 15.305A. So this tells you how the government evaluates proposals, um, what type of factors they use, any rating combinations. Um, and so if you read FAR 15, um, you'll see this a lot on the RFQ, and it'll also be used in combination with other FAR parts. So you'll see this in combination with FAR Part 8 or FAR Part 12. Um, and so you'll see this a lot, but it's just, it just means this is the way the government does the source selection. Next slide. So how the government does the source selection, um, so we take you through the process. If um, under the SAT, which is the Simplify Acquisition Threshold, which is, you'll find more information about it in FAR Part 13. Under the SAT, so under the SAT, it's currently at under anything under 250000 the government doesn't have to do an in-depth evaluation process. So there is no source selection process. And this includes like there's no technical evaluation panel. The way this um, simplified position process works is that the, gun, the contracting officer or the contract specialist uh, will make a decision based on evaluating three quotes. Um, and the decision is based kind of more of a best value or, or LPTA. Um, I will discuss that more in a different slide. Next slide. So a simple acquisition threshold. So, so how do you know if it's on the SAT? Uh, you will receive a, a call from the contracting officer requesting a quote. Um, so typically uh, anything under the SAT um, doesn't typically get posted online. I should, but it really doesn't. Um, and so a contracting officer would just call around, grab three quotes, and then make an award. You can actually estimate if something's um, under SAT. The RFP will always say it's under the simple acquisition threshold. In the government, there are people, normally it's your um, entry level contracting specialists who do um, simple acquisition um, um, awards. And so there's a specific group that does that, and they all they do all day long is grab three quotes, and make an award. And so, and so a lot of these um, requirements are put. Are sometimes posted on the forecast on the government forecast. Um, sometimes they're posted online. Um, FPO is used heavily um, for um, anything on the staff. Next slide. So for anything over two hundred fifty thousand dollars, the source selection process is developed to help the government evaluate the proposal. So the source selection process is developed during the creation of the requirement. So when the government is putting all the documentation together, um, the contracting officer works with the program office to choose which factors are important to them. So factors can include anything from technical approach, management approach, key personnel, task performance, price, or the executive team. It's recommended that we use um, three to four evaluation factors. Um, the technical evaluation panel consists of uh, subject matter experts, technical writers, end users, or the contracting staff. Um, contracting officers are encouraged to use um, additive scores rather than numerical or color scores. Um, this is a recommendation from GAO. 
um, that they use this type of scoring system to evaluate um, proposals. Um, next slide. Okay, and so there are two different types of evaluation pro um, process. Um, I do want to state that I forgot to mention that um, I've been in the government. Oh, I I was a contracting officer and a contract specialist um, in a core uh, for six different agencies evaluating proposals, and so I put together technical evaluation panels, put together RFQs. Um, types of evaluations, made recommendations on type of evaluations people should use uh, for services and products. So a lot of things I'm discussing with you guys is are things that happen internally and what the government do it and why they do it. Um, and so we have two types of evaluation process. One is trade-off, which is considered best value. And and this all this means is that uh, that evaluation factors um, are clearly stated in the solicitation. Uh, evaluation factors, um, so solicitation should state whether all evaluation factors other than cost and price when combined are significantly more important than approximately equal to or significantly less important than cost or price. So best value is not based on price, it is based on the entire package of the, of the, of the proposal that you submitted. Um, you can find more information about best value in FAR 15 and also FAR 16, and I'll get that um, and I'll show you guys later an example of what I'm referring to. Next slide. All right, so the second evaluation strategies uh, that um, the government uses is what is price technically acceptable. Um, and this is a, a, there are two ways to evaluate proposals as best value and, and lowest price technically acceptable. Uh, lowest price technically acceptable, the LPTA is something that it's, it's considered old school, uh, a way of doing um, evaluations, um, and m a lot of newer contracting officers or government agencies are now moving towards just doing best value. Um, solicitation must state that it is uh, lowest price, and you can find that in solicitation or RFQ. Uh, there are no trade-offs. Uh, proposals are evaluated for accessibility, so it's a go and no-go decision from the technical evaluation panel. I will get into that in the later slide. Next slide. So here's an example of LPTA evaluation process. So the way it, the way the process works is that proposals are evaluated based on price first and technical um, accessibility. So for example, um, let's say I was a contracting officer. I received three proposals with proposal one, two, and three. Uh, proposal one came at $500,000. I then submitted it over to the technical evaluation person. They evaluate the proposal and they say, hey, this is technically unacceptable. Um, so because of this, I can now hand her the next proposal. So I would hand her proposal two and it's for $600,000. And um, and she's and that person's going to rate it technically acceptable. Um, because of this, proposal three would not be evaluated. Even if proposal three came in at six hundred thousand, six hundred thousand twenty-five cents, it would not be evaluated. Um, just because the government has already received a proposal that was uh, lowest price and technically acceptable, proposal two wins because it was lowest price and it was technically acceptable. Next slide. All right, the other one is uh, best value. Best value is referred to competitive negotiated procurement in which the government reserves the right to select the most advantageous offer to the government by evaluating and comparing factors in addition to cost or price. A best value procurement enables the government to purchase technical superiority, even if it means paying a premium price. A premium is the difference between the price of the lowest price proposal and the one in which the government believes offers its best value. I will show you that um, an example of a best value evaluation in the next slide. So um, in order for a best value um, evaluate, um, award to be made, there has to be thorough documentation. So the evaluation panel has to document it, document the, the, the rating. The contract specialist has to document the, the ratings also. And so does the contracting officer has to document the award decision. 
um, is a little bit more complex than the LPTA. In the LPTA process, it is a thumbs up, thumbs down um, award decision. Um, and it's maybe one to two pages long um, to write up to make say, hey, these guys won the award. When it comes to best value, I've seen documentation be anywhere from 20 to 50 pages of why the government selected a specific vendor. Um, and this is really important because the government knows that without this information, if the war were to get protested, then this is the information they're going to look at. They're going to look at what was this, what was the rationale for the decision? Was it document was it documented? Um, do they have the files that support this? And so this is uh, really important for every every agency I worked on, every everything that I worked at has always focused on making sure this is correct. Um, and it has to be consistent with the source selection procedures. This is an internal document that the government has. Um, that says, hey, we're going to evaluate the proposal based on these criteria. These are the personnel who are going to evaluate them. Uh, this is the timeline. Um, there's nothing as advantageous to you as far as um, as a vendor to know what's in this document. Uh, because uh, a majority of that document is posted on the RFP. So you're going to see in section M, um, you're going to see what they're evaluating on, what their evaluation criteria are, what are the factors. Um, best value gives the government uh, a rationale, explanation on how to, and, and justification to select a proposal that they believe is best value. Um, next slide. And so you can find uh, more information about best value um, on FAR 15.605. Um, it's also found in the solicitation and any RFQ will be found in section M. Um, if the contracting officer does not use the uniform um, contract format that they might, you might just have to hit control F and then hit evaluate, and type in evaluation criteria um, and then find evaluate, how they're going to evaluate your proposal. Um, and this is really key. Next slide. Uh, so types of evaluation and the best value, there are three methods. There are numerical, adjective, and color. Um, the Government is now moving towards an adjective. Um, it is recommended that we that they use an adjective um, scoring system. Uh, they no longer use numerical color coding. Um, you might still see it, and the only reason why is because you know there's a contracting officer who's been doing this for 30 years, and that is the way he likes to do it. Um, and so, because he also signs off on the award, he gets to decide how to evaluate the proposals. Um, and so that's kind of a uh, it, it, it's based by base by contracting officer. They have a say in, on how to buy your proposal because they're signing off on it. But um, it is advantageous to government to use additive scoring system and the additive score system it is also helpful for you to get more of a, a clear picture of why and what they're evaluating, evaluating, evaluating you on and how and, and what score they're giving you. Next. And so this is an example of a scoring system. So I have the numerical, the adjective, the adjective and the color coding. Um, and then you'll find a description of, of what it is. Um, you'll see this in, like I said, you'll see this in section M of the RFQ. Next slide. Okay, so here I have an example of evaluating um, under best value. So let's say, been, so I received, let's say I was a contracting officer. And I received three um, proposals from company A, company B, and company C. Uh, so this is the way it works. The technical evaluation panel will evaluate each proposal. Once they evaluate each proposal, they would then have they would then have uh, a consensus report where they have to come up with a consensus of what the rating is for each proposal together, collective. Um, and this can get messy because you know sometimes you'll find one evaluator who says you know, this, this proposal received this is excellent score. And then you have another evaluator says um, that this proposal was unsatisfactory. And so they have to meet in the middle somewhere and they have to come to a consensus of why, they have to make an argument for why they believe this, and why they believe that. If they can't come up with a conclusion, um, the contracting officer normally steps in. Uh, the contracting officer is, is normally not a part of the evaluation process. Um, when it comes to evaluation, the technical portion, that's only because uh, they're not experts 
and what you're writing your proposal when it comes to this technical work. Um, so they evaluate proposals based on compliance. Did are is the vendor a registered on SAM? Did they submit um, the SF fourteen forty nine form? Did they did they read their amendments? Are they uh, did they sign off on the clauses? Um, things like that. He's more worried about compliance, um, and that's super important. Uh, so here in this example, the evaluation panel has come up with the consensus, and this is this is what they'll submit to the contracting officer. I would say company A has received an excellent score for technical approach, an excellent score for key personnel, and an excellent score for past performance, and their price is $10 million. Uh, company B has a has factor one. Um, their score is good, which is normally the second highest rating. And then they have an excellent score on key personnel, an excellent score on past performance, and their pricing is 11 million. If I was just to look at these two companies, company A and company B, I will award it to company A. The reason why is they have a superior um, technical proposal and they also have the lowest price. So overall, this is, this is a good, um, that would be the winner. Then we have company C. Company C is uh, has a good rating, has an excellent key personnel, and has a good excellent past performance. But they came in at seven million dollars. Um, another thing that I want to discuss is that the government also has an estimate in a budget for what this work is going to cost. So they have an IUCE, which is the Independent Government Cost Estimate, and the way they develop that is through historical data or um, what they believe it's going to cost them to um, provide for the for somebody to provide the services or goods. And then because of that, they also have a funding amount. So each program office gets appropriated a funding amount. And so in this case, they will fund it 8.5 million for this um, specific um, project. Um, normally when that's the case, they try to stay within that budget range uh, because it's really hard to ask for additional money. Um, I have been in some agencies where if you know they needed an extra million, $2 million, they just sent over an email and they were able to get the additional funding for a project. So most majority of the agencies are smaller, are not well funded, and so they have to work with what they have. And so if that's the case, then they either would be scoped the project or they and they would be scoped the project or they would ask for a discount. Um, you always if you ever see a solicitation go back out on the street, it's because in it's and it's been de scope, it's because the government had to de scope it and because they de scoped it, they have to post it back online. Um, so in this scenario, if if I was a contracting officer and I saw this the rating system and the price, I would award it to company C. Uh, and the reason why is that they're not that far off when it comes to uh, a technical uh, evaluation, the evaluation factor scoring. Um, so they're still providing us a good technical proposal. And then the pricing is um, it's under the funding amount and it's under the set, the IUCE. Um, I would, if I was the CEO and company A was to get the award, I would highly, I would have to justify why the government is spending an additional $3 million um, for the goods or services. So I have to justify it. And in and, and typically the cases, the government can't justify that because um, it's just it's just really hard to justify, hey, the government spending more money, but there was a, another proposal that was also good and it could have, could have been on the budget. Um, so that's some, this is what Best Value is. It gives the contracting officer an opportunity to select the vendor, um, the office, the entire package. Um, so, and, and, it, and it definitely, um, it hurts, you know, because company A did some very pretty uh, um, technical approach, but um, when, you, when somebody beats you by that much, then it's, um, it's really hard to win. I would say that Sometimes, so let's say company C submitted a proposal for $3 million, the government would be hesitant and they will actually call them up and be, hey, why did you submit a proposal for $3 million? Uh, was your math wrong? Uh, they won't let them redo their math, by the way. Um, they will find out why that was the case. If the government, I've been in a scenario where there was a, there was something similar to that with, the lowest proposal was lower, but they had a high, they had a, a technical approach that was excellent. And so, and the reason why they were awarded the contract is because they came up with an innovative approach 
to the solution, which has which gave them a cost savings, uh, which the other competitors weren't using, and so that is why they won. Um, so that is the best by your evaluation process um, both behind the scenes. Next question, next slide. Um, so under best value, when you, um, so in, just to recap, company A had, had, has the best proposal, but the price was too high. Company B has a good proposal, but the price is higher than the best proposal. And company C has a good proposal and it's within the IUC and funding amount. Company C would be awarded a contract for $7 million based on their overall process proposal. So let's say if company C submitted a bid of $9 million, um, then company A would actually have, would, would have won the contract uh, because the cost is not significant. There's not a significant difference when it's, I would say anything under 20% or 10 to 20% is what the government, there's no rule of thumb by the way, but anything, I would say about anything under 20%, the government can justify why they're going to award to a higher bidder um, if they can justify this technical evaluation criteria. Next slide. So strategies from millennial best value. Um, I I highly recommend that you respond to everything on RSQ and SOW. Um, submit all the required documents. Um, proofread your proposals for grammar or copy and paste. Um, or, or if you copy and paste portions of your proposals, make sure that you change the agency's name that you're submitting it to, or the project's name. Um, just follow instructions. Show the government you can do the work with your technical expertise. I think. Um, I've seen a lot of bad proposals, and some of the reasons are they're not in compliance, they're not following the rules as far as like the formatting, the font, the size, or um, you know they did the copy and paste approach and they forgot to change the agency name and they forgot to change the project name and, and it just gets a little messy. Um, evaluators don't like to see that because um, then they just then, then they know you just copy and paste. Um, Following instructions, um, if in the evaluation criteria, it will tell you exactly what they're evaluating, evaluating you on. And so some of those things is where you want to pinpoint is, is, is you know, if they ask you, if they want to evaluate your key personnel and the education level and the experience level of your key personnel, but you want to highlight that in your proposal. Um, so things like that, things that you want to focus on. And then show the government you can do your work. Um, the technical expertise portion is really important. Um, don't just, uh, you know, respond. Don't respond to their SOW or PWS by repeating what they said. Um, make it unique. Make it your own. Um, let them know what type of uh, software you plan to use. Um, the experience level that you that you have, and also the, if you've done any projects. So if, you know, in, in a technical proposal, you were right, hey, we use a similar approach at the Department of Health, and we plan to use this approach at the Department of State for this proposal. Things like that. Um, and you want to describe the approach that you use, how you use it, why you use it, um, things like that is what they want to see. Next slide. Um, and then finalize the process with the CEO. The technical, the, so this is what happens internally. Uh, the technical evaluation chairperson makes a recommendation, um, and then that recommendation goes to the contract specialist, who uses that recommendation to develop an award decision. So the contract specialist is also making a recommendation based on the technical evaluation chair, and then the contracting officer takes that information and creates an award decision, finalizes the award decision, and makes the final decision on the award date. So I would say 90% of the time, the contracting officer will listen to the technical evaluation chair and the contract specialist when it comes to awarding a contract. Let's say about 10%, the contracting officer decides not to. And the reason why the contracting officer would just, they're on your side when it comes to making the, the competitive process fair. They want to make sure it's fair. They want to make sure that the evaluators evaluate, evaluate you fairly. They'll review the evaluation um, write up that happens. Uh, this is really because what ha ends up happening if there's a protest or if something goes wrong with the contract, with the contract, then the person who's responsible is the contracting officer. There are the persons who um, will have to, you know, you know, go up in front of the judge and explain what just happened. Uh, they can also be personally sued. Um, that's the one. Of, that's one of the 
few jobs in the government that can be personally sued. Um, so a lot of contracting officers have um, professional liability insurance uh, just to protect themselves. And so they, and because of that, they're very hesitant to sign off on awards um, unless it's, it's been documented. Um, once that's been done, then they go to the program office um, and they get notified of who was selected and, the, and then the vendor gets notified that they won. Uh, effect, and then that's it. Thank you. Yeah, and so final steps, uh, CEO notifies the award decision, and then the, everything's documented, and the program office schedules a kickoff meeting with the award uh, Next slide, and that will wrap up our webinar. Thank you so much, Pedro. If anybody has questions, they can reach out to him directly with the contact information you see on your screen. Um, and this concludes the webinar. Thank you.